Hello, today I'll be showing you how to create a simple checkpoint system in Roblox Studio. And the first thing we have to do is create a folder which will house all of our checkpoints. And I'm just going to name this folder Checkpoints. And now I'm going to create part which will serve as the checkpoint. You, I'm just going to make it neon to look like a checkpoint. You can make your checkpoint look however you want. It's completely up to you. Just make sure that your checkpoint is anchored and can Clyde is off so that it looks nice. Oh, where is, where is the can Clyde property? Oh. So, turn off can Clyde and I'm going to make it neon using the properties menu. And now we have our checkpoint. I'm going to place it inside our checkpoints folder. And I'm going to name this first checkpoint 1. And the name of your checkpoint is actually going to matter to some extent. Because um, it'll just be easier to identify each checkpoint when we start programming. So naming your checkpoints just any... Well, not any numerical value, but... Um, Name it by stage. So if it's the first stage, name it one, the second page, make it number two, and if it's um the third stage, of course name it um three. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just naming these and placing them where wherever I want on my hobby. And there we go. Oh, gotta name this one four. Don't forget that. Because if you have two that are the same name, it's not going to work that well. Oh, there's my plug-in going. So, I'm going to create a new script, sir, script service called Checkpoint Sandler. And I've created a little layout here that will basically just tell us where to put all the things in the script. So the first thing it we need is the player service so we can identify when a new player has joined the run service which I will explain a little bit when it comes to using it and the tween service which is going to allow us to have a little animation when people get to a new checkpoint. So, in variables, all we need is the time it takes for the animation to play here, which will be one second. You could, of course, change that to whatever amount of time you want. And a table of the checkpoints, which first we have to actually get the checkpoints folder. And call a function called getChildren, which basically just creates a table of all the objects in in the checkpoints folder which is of course our checkpoints and in functions I'll leave that empty for now um, and let's get to the part where we actually create the stage stat so connect to that player and we're gonna create a leader stats folder and this does have to be named leader stats so the game can identify that we're going to create stats for the game and because we have this um, in the player it's going to know that um, we want these to be displayed on the player list so now we create the stage value and this is going to be an int value which basically just is short for integer value. Now an integer is a number it can be negative or positive but it cannot be a decimal or a fraction something like that. It has to be whole. So we're going to name it stage so it shows up like that. I'm going to set the value to 1 because um, I I won't actually be showing you how to save stages 
if you want to do that, I have a link in the description to a tutorial made by Alvin Blocks about data storing, and I hope you'll find that um, easy to use. And we're going to parent this to the leader stats so it shows up. Now there's a, a um, event of the player called character added and this basically just tells us every time a character is added and the first thing I want to do is get the root part and the root part is a part that's inside the character that essentially wherever the root part is all the parts within the character um, will move with it which is why we want to get that so we can position it to where our checkpoint is and to find our checkpoint, I'm going to define a new function right here. We're going to call this find checkpoint. And we're going to need the character and the, and the player's stage for this. And we're just going to loop through the checkpoints table so we can get every checkpoint. And now we want to get the stage that that checkpoint presents by using this two number function now the way two number works is it'll take something like a string and it'll turn it into a number and our name property of the checkpoint is a string and we need it to be a number so we can match it up with the stage's value so we'll do if stage dot value is equal to checkpoint number then we're going to return the checkpoint and that will get us our checkpoint now we're gonna go down here and get our checkpoint using that function we're gonna call it function here and put in necessary parameters now we're gonna do run service the heartbeat wait now um, heartbeat is an event of run service and it's fired every frame so basically by saying run service dot heartbeat wait we're just waiting one frame so you could also just go like like this as well or like this but um, I'll just be using this because better so, now we're actually going to go to the part where we are positioning the root part, and we're going to set it. Now, C frame, we're changing the root part to C frame, and C frame is basically like position, how it takes into account orientation as well, which is why it's good. And by doing this, setting the root part C frame to the checkpoint C frame, we're putting the humanoid root part, which is the center of the character, to the position of our checkpoint. However, as you see here, the checkpoint is kind of like it's right on top of the plate that's on top of. And um, that means the character will literally spawn inside of this plate that's on top of, which is not good. So we're going to give it a look the character a little bit extra breathing room here by setting it one stud above the checkpoint by going times c frame dot new zero one zero because this one right here represents height basically it's the y component and that in theory should um it should put us in the correct checkpoint so let's just do a quick test by running the game. And as you can see, we did spawn on the first checkpoint. However, that's only half the battle. We also need to make it so that when we get to the second checkpoint, our stage stat is going to change. So that if we were to die on this stage like this, we'd actually respawn on the second stage. So... As you can see, I did not because we haven't added that yet. So, I'm just going to do that right now. So, you may have noticed that I left this 
initialize section of the script empty and that's because this is where we're going to handle the touches to the checkpoints so we're once again going to loop through the checkpoints folder like so and then we're going to connect an event to these each and every one and this touch right here is the part that touched the checkpoint and since we're doing a for loop here this event is going to be connected to each of these checkpoints so first of all we want to get the humanoid because we want to verify that a player actually did step on this and the first step is getting the humanoid making sure that they're alive so touch dot parent because let's say that the person's right leg um hit the checkpoint well that's that is inside of the character so if we actually want to get the character we have to um get the legs parent and five child humanoid so we find the humanoid if the humanoid exists and its health is greater than zero, meaning it would be live, then we want to check if they're a player or not. So we could do this using a function of the player service called get player from character. And this will basically allow us to get a player object just from the character. So we're gonna put touch.parent in here. Now we want to know, of course, if the player exists as well. So if player, then we want to get their leader stats. Player wait for child leader stats, which will get us the folder that houses their stage. So now we get our their stage value which will be leader dots leader stats dot stage and then we can figure out if this is supposed to be their next checkpoint because if we just set it to any checkpoint they got on then they could skip stages they could accidentally go back a stage probably make them want to leave because who wants to have to redo a stage so now we want to know, of course, if this is the right, the correct stage. So we'll create a variable for stage number, which will just be, um, oh right, and checkpoint. We want their checkpoint number instead. So we're gonna do like what we did in the find checkpoint function. We just got the two number of the checkpoint's name. So if checkpoint number um minus stage dot value is less than one then well no is greater than is equal to one actually because this would mean that the Checkpoint number is one more than the stage's value, which would mean it's a one away from where they currently are, so we should change it. So now we could do stage dot value equals checkpoint number. And now we can test this and see if it really does work. So we're going to jump across here. Oh, I'm really bad at obvious. So. Oh, see? So it, it really does change our stat. And now let me just fall to test that it's going to respawn us there. And we respawn in the correct position like we should have. Now, now you can animate this. So in a lot of obbies I see them make this quick little animation where the checkpoint does a little flash. 
to signify that you've gotten onto a new checkpoint. I've seen a lot of other ones do confetti or maybe a little ding noise, but I'll just be making that little flash thing. And that's where the tween service comes in. It basically, um, you know how you use animation editor to animate our character? Well, the tween service basically allows us to smoothly transition properties of an object. So, first we need to figure, we need a goal. And this goal is going to be a table of the properties that we're changing. So, all I'm going to change is the size and transparency. Um, and I want to make the size, the checkpoints size, plus, um, just, I don't know, a th random thing, maybe two studs out from where it is, one stud, half stud higher, that, that seems good, and then we want to make the transparency one, and now, um, I'm not actually going to be using the same checkpoint that they got on to animate. I'm actually going to clone it and then play that animation over the original checkpoint. So we're going to clone the checkpoint. But like this. And now we want to make sure the new checkpoint is parented to the workspace. And now we can actually create this um, little animation here by creating this variable tween service create and we want the object our tween time and the goal now this tween time parameter I just put in here this is actually I only decide put in team but time but you could also put in things like the the easing style which are basically different ways of animating it but I just decided to only put time because it'll look nice and smooth without those fancy little adjustments now we're gonna call the play function of this tween so it plays the animation and then tween pleated event tells us when the animation has ended and then we can destroy this cloned checkpoint to get it out of the way. So, that should work. Let's just test it out to be sure. So, I'm going to go through this obby. And, like I said, it just did that little animation. If you didn't see it, I'll play it again. And it did it again. So, looks pretty nice. Anyways, that's it for today's tutorial. If you enjoyed or just learned something, remember to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Bye.